This video is sponsored by Renaissance Bank, the best bank in the South. Visit renaissancenation.com. What's up? It's a beautiful day today to get out and walk around. We also had a beautiful day on Thanksgiving for the uh, Egg Bowl in Starkville. And everybody's talking about the end of the game, the missed kick and the penalty. But, you know, when you play 80 plays, no one play, no two plays are the difference. So let's take a look at some of the plays in the game that did make a huge difference and see what we think. Check it out. First play is a third down stop for Mississippi State. And it's one of the things they did really well in this ball game, got off the field on third downs. Sometimes it only takes one guy to blow it up. So we'll watch the play. They pressure the pocket, uh, a breakdown in their pass pro, and then it'll hit at the line at the uh, at the line to gain, and you get off the field. So a couple things to look at. You can't see a whole lot on this particular shot on television what they're trying to do, but here's an example of another team, Ole Miss in this case, using a snug formation, and they're trying to kind of slow play these verticals to kind of draw a guy up and get behind. They want to hit the big play. But their safety valve is bringing one underneath from the backside. The problem is he just doesn't have time to sit back there and read it. And I'll show you. So that's Kobe Jones, the left or right defensive end, matched up against their left tackle. Watch him just go to the outside. Really nice move. Gets his hands in him, pulls him down off balance. The tackle is now completely out of position. And any quarterback is going to feel this, and especially a guy who can run. So now he's going to try to escape. You get a guy to escape. You can break the play down, but this is a guy who can really hurt you on these types of plays. And so this is one of the things that a lot of people talked about is there's just more urgency and aggressiveness for State's defense in this game than we had seen some of the others. And there you see two guys flying to the football, one flying to the quarterback. Watch it again. It's a deal right here where if Brian Cole stops and tries to guess, is he going out inside or outside? then he's going to have time to make this throw for a first down or make a bigger play with his legs. But it's just aggressive football. You're going to force the issue into his hands. He has to unload it off balance a little quicker than he wants to. And then you have other defenders running to the football. So good stop. Here State on offense uh, on their first scoring drive, getting the tight end on the backside of their formation away from three receivers, slip him out, get him open, hit him quickly, and then a big run by the tight end. What uh, you have to like is the design, but also this is a deal where defense doesn't really defend anybody. So four down linemen and effectively three linebackers. It may be uh, nickel personnel, but what they definitely have is a three deep coverage, right? Safety, one single high safety in the middle of the field, three deep coverage. I'm going to show you what they do. So it's kind of a flood concept where you're outside deep guys running that comeback. You're going to have the shallow here because they come back deep and then the inside next side is or backside is coming across to give you that middle read potentially if you don't get it out quickly so they're going to put three guys running to this side of the field watch how it happens so on the fake to the running back right there and i believe there may be a read built in but regardless the action to the running back just draws everybody everybody's looking there and especially this backside defender who would be the flat defender in the zone coverage he's pulled in and that's what gets the tight end open but what i want you to look at is your backside crosser gets wide open in the middle of the field too and so a lot of true freshman quarterbacks right here are going to want to anyway pull up and try to hit this big play throwing back in the middle. They're just gonna, you're going to want to look for it to peak. A lot of freshman quarterbacks are going to want to fire this comeback route down the sideline and forget about the underneath because you want the big throw. You're a freshman to show off that arm. And this is just a deal where you're taking what they're giving you right here on second down, and it turns into a huge play. The other thing is you have one, two, and three guys in this pattern who all three are wide open. Could have thrown to any of those three for a big play, but he chose the right one. Here's the backside flat defender in their um, coverage. And really, by the time he even realizes the quarterback still has the ball, his momentum was still going towards the Kylan Hill run fake, which shows you how much that defense was really focused on Kylan Hill. And get a big play out of it. Here's the touchdown to con. Uh, to cap off that drive, Nick Gibson on the zone through the backside and outruns everybody. 
And this was really blocked perfectly up front. Like you just can't block it any better right here. There's several things to notice and it's not the best quality, but I'll try to zoom in here where you can see it too. But first off, you'll watch the right guard, LaQuinston Sharp, kind of engage, I, I don't know the, who the defender was, but then drive him back away across the formation. So there he is engaged. Watch him. And look at that. Spun him around. Now he's facing backwards and runs him across the formation out of the play. A really nice job. The other thing is you've got this combo working, the center and backside guard up to that play side linebacker, and it's working working perfectly. Really, a left guard had leverage, so the center, Daryl Williams, didn't have to do too much on him. He's just up to the linebacker. So because of the block by the right guard, the job that the right tackle is doing, and now it's opened up because this is all sealed off. Left guard is driving a guy off. Center is up on the linebacker, and watch what the center, Daryl Williams, is able to do here. So when he hits the linebacker, now he's driving him across and out to the unblocked corner. He's actually going to block two guys. Now, if Nick Gibson hits this hole and tries to bounce it and is quick on the read, he's going to run into this cornerback lined up closely who's not blocked. He's patient, though, and sees it and is going to come behind the block of Daryl Williams. And watch what Williams does right here with the linebacker. He drives the linebacker into the unblocked corner and basically blocks two players in the same play. And then it's a foot race to the end zone, and the running back wins that. Here's another third down stop for State's defense. It's all about a pass rush versus five-man protection. They're in empty because they rotate the running back out or, or uh, motion him out, and State's able to run this down. We're going to look at because there's some interesting things here. I, you know, I'm not able to see with the copy that I had here what the play clock was on. It looked like they had time. But when they motion him out to the three receiver side, that's going to put four Ole Miss receivers over here, single guy to the other side, and just five man protection with five offensive linemen. But look what State's doing. When they run the running back out of there, State's trying to run a defender out with him also at the last minute, or at least you know, move him, and that totally fouls up the protection for Ole Miss, I'll show you. Because that defender had lined up on this side, before the snap, Ole Miss had set its protection to this side, and we're going to account for three. So the center is going to help back this way. But now what has happened is he's running out of there. He's no longer there, and State instead is bringing two to this side in this nickel look. So Ole Miss, before the snap, thought it was going to be three coming to this side, and they'd have three on three. Instead, he runs out, and now the three are coming to this side, and they don't get their protection handed off. You can see right here, three offensive linemen on two rushers, and on this side, two offensive linemen for three rushers. They're outnumbered on the back side. Here's what's impressive about it is, he knows it right away. It's a freshman quarterback who knows it right away that my protection is set here. The rush is coming here. I've got to use my legs. And he tries to. State aggressive, collapsed it though, did not let him get out of there freely. You're pursuing the ball with a blocker here so you don't let him just get free. Now he's got to go sideways. And here's a player in 11, Landrews, one of the faster players on State's team, who ran – Plumley down a couple of times in the night and showed that he had the speed to do so. There's a whole lot of interesting on this play. State's got a deep dig and a crosser on the backside. And it's third and 12. State's got to go 12 yards to get a first down. So Ole Miss has given him a too high safety look. Watch the play first. Four-man rush. They squeeze him out of there. He gets a big block and makes a first down run. And a lot of fans go, well, how can you give that up? There's a couple of reasons for it, and I'll show you that right now. First off, it's a smart deal from uh, Ole Miss because what they are doing, they're playing zone coverage on the entire field. It is, you know, zone coverage too high. But on the backside, singled up uh, on the backside, they are matching this guy, basically like in a man-to-man, -man, knowing that the scouting report says they want to run him across there and hit him underneath and see if he can catch it running. They've done it a bunch the last two years. And so they're going to defend that by playing man on one guy. It's actually a smart deal, but it gets them hurt right here. Now, I'm just guessing, but I think 
that Schrader wants to throw this crosser because he sees the zone and knows they're going to be dropping. And he, I think he peeks at it. I really do. But what he sees is a defender running with him step for step. On top of two things. One, then he'd have to come back and wait on this deep crosser where he's got a safety sitting over the top. And if he glances at that, he's seeing that too. His eyes actually may be there already looking at it. And now he's getting squeezed. It's not terrible protection because now he can step up. Watch when he steps up, though. He steps up into that twist that's making the pocket in front of him just not very clean. And no hesitation, he's going to escape and do this with his legs. And then the thing I like most about the play is Kylan Hill, the running back, is on the pass route. He releases because they only rushed four. They didn't need his help in protection. And as soon as he sees a quarterback running, watch him turn. The quarterback pointed for him to block, but it's too late. He's already turned and knows I've got to look up somebody to hit and gives him a pancake right here, a huge block. And that could be the block that gave you a first down. Uh, And I think it is. So just an excellent job. Left side of your screen, right here, boom. Zone run that Kylan Hill is going to cut back. I don't think it's a counter designed to come out the backside, but that's where it comes to because of the defensive front. Brings it out the back, outrun the next level guys, huge play. A couple things up front that I saw is, uh, one, when you look at what Ole Miss is doing right here on third down, they're going straight up man-to-man on every receiver that's on the field and trying to pressure this line of scrimmage a little bit. They go three down linemen, ends or outside linebackers walked up, You know, your other two are in there, and the defensive backs walked in there as well. So when you count them at the line of scrimmage, they've got a lot of defenders in there. So five guys on the front and four more at the next level, nine players in the box against this formation. But look what happens. When they motion the tight end across, that they're going to bring back across and block in front, it kind of removes one a little bit, gets him off the line of scrimmage, and nobody runs with the tight end. So now the quarterback is going to read that edge defender, that that one off the edge who's all the way out here, which gives him a give read. So State's going to unblock and read the outside. They're going to turn the tight end back and block the next, you know, off the edge. But what it does is they have you outnumbered. There are two defenders and one blocker. But the problem is they're they're not in different lanes. They're both running the same track to the outside shoulder of the blocker. And this is one where if one's outside and one comes falls back inside, or vice versa, you know, if he takes inside and you've got the outside here, you're going to have this lane get kind of, you know, uh, covered. Instead, they both go outside and it leaves a cutback lane right here. And also, two linebackers in the middle that found themselves stacked. So we talk about gap responsibility instead of one here, one on the other gap. They both got behind each other. So really, you had four defenders for Ole Miss in two spots, and that opens the hole for the cutback. Blocking downfield is good enough and a good strong finish. So again, you can see it right here. It's almost like you know somebody's going to take inside and another guy's going to take outside, but they both run the same track and open the lane, so they're in the same spot. And then both those linebackers were standing behind each other, and you just got this great big cutback lane for the running back. He's running to daylight. Really easy to see. Wide receiver fighting downfield. That's what it takes. Ole Miss started throwing the ball more, and they knew they had to. State was focused on the run. They're down 14 zip. Here's a big play in their pass game. They went four receivers with a tight end of that side, got him open on a rollout. And I'll just show you one interesting thing about this. If you notice, okay, so three receivers to the wide side of the field and a tight end. So that's four receivers over there, plus the running back lined up to the right of the quarterback. So every possible receiver on their offense is lined up to that side, yet State still balances their defensive formation with a corner right there. The two cornerbacks are outside one side, outside the other. And this is Nichols. So you got four down linemen, two linebackers, three safeties on the field for State. And here's what happens. Nickel safety responsible for the flat, the way they're going to play this. 
And so he goes there because they get the bubble action. They may be route matching, and that's kind of what it looks like up on top as well because the corner is going to turn and run up this sideline. And right here, so the safety is kind of singled up with this their best receiver running right in his face. He can't afford to let him get behind him, so he back pedals past the sticks, and a strong route gives him separation to get the first down. TV copy gave you a good look at the route, and it's one where the safety just has to respect that he may run by me, can't let him do it, and he gives up the cushion. All right, chess match on third down. Watch how this works. Three safeties. This is a nickel deal for State right here on third and six. Three safeties, corners on the outside. Watch what happens here. Two linebackers for State. They both are coming off the edge. And so keep your eyes on the quarterback. Dummy snap right here. Okay, you see that? He just gave the dummy snap, and both linebackers show they think they're snapping it. We're coming off the edge. And so when he sees that, watch his left hand. Watch him signal to this slot receiver now and sight adjust to what State's trying to do. Okay, you see that? He's giving him a hand signal. The receiver already knows it. He can see the guy walking down. They have now sight adjusted and with the hand signal have confirmed it and are checking to a slant without ever actually saying it at the line of scrimmage. So now he snaps. Linebackers do come, and he immediately is looking for this one-on-one -on -one slant route. And even though the defender is playing him on the inside shoulder, he still gets the position and the ball is coming out on time. And so a little chess match. X's and O's, gamesmanship, and that's how it works. Okay, three backs down here on the goal line. They're going to read that defensive end. I think that's Kobe Jones. You can see he's got two to either side, but he's reading Jones. If Jones were to just hang out here on the outside, he might give this thing back the other way to the running back, but watch what he does. He just kind of rides it for a step longer to influence that end to go ahead and step down inside. And when he does, now he's going to keep the football. Let me show you what's impressive about this run. You have one free defender here who the blocker is going to miss. The defender in the slot is going to get inside of the receiver. So you're going to have two maroon jerseys with a shot of him at the five-yard line. He's got to outrun one. The other's got a chance to tackle him but can't quite do it, getting pushed in the back. And he still gets it in there. So it's a good, strong run. And, and really, you defended it pretty doggone well. Again, a chance. And so, you know, if you miss this angle right here, it makes it tough. And again, you know, he, he's kind of engaged. He's moving this way, but he's kind of engaged uh, with a blocker behind him. And that makes the difference. Probably should have been a block in the back. Love this play right here on fourth down and three in the game for State. And they're going to get Dedrick Thomas out the backside of the snug formation. Plenty of time to throw. Puts it in there where he can make the play. Now, I talked to Joe Moorhead. Some of y'all probably saw this on my radio show, and we talked about this play, and this is what we kind of learned here, is it's a smash concept on the short side of the field, of this snug, with the tight end underneath. And on fourth and three, what you're trying to do is high-low a defender. Get him out here, and he's either got to go back or up, but either way, he can't be right. So the initial read for him is one and two on this side of the field based on that edge defender. But if you look what happens, the corner turns and runs with the corner route. So they defend this side well. And two defenders have run out of here to take the tight end and take that throw away on fourth and three. Now, if the ball's already on him, he may catch it and turn and get there, but it's but it's not. So he's seeing three defenders are jumping on your smash concept. So what they're doing is bringing the outside of Cyrus Mitchell across. He's your third option. And what Joe Moorhead said is the fourth option on this play is the deep cross. And we'll see it from behind me. He gets all the way on fourth and three, true freshman quarterback. Eyes are where they're supposed to be initially here. Going to flip his head and find his third and fourth option, read it, and make the throw. And it's really impressive to me because I'm watching what he's going through. He's not freaked out. He reads the two-receiver side. It, both are covered. With good protection, now he has the time to turn his head. The first thing he sees is a linebacker sitting in the throwing lane of the underneath 
and the safety, the lone deep defender on that side, running up to take the crosser. Now he's just got to wait for the deep crosser to clear. And Joe Moorhead said that, you know, he wished he'd stayed in the pocket a little bit. He kind of drifted. And really, you drift into the rush, which may could you know affect the throw against a better team. Probably, if you're standing strong in this pocket, he may actually throw this thing upfield right here, and Thomas go catch it for a touchdown. But right here, he's just going to bring it out here and let him run it down for a first down. So a heck of a play on fourth and three in a critical moment. Here's a touchdown run for Garrett Schrader. Reads play side inside linebacker keeps and scores. Now, it takes 11 to score a touchdown, but this is really about three players right here, and I'll try to zoom it in. Again, not great quality, but zoom it in. It's left tackle, his ability to block down on a 3-4 uh, a defensive end, 3-4 three, three, defensive tackle, right guard, and his ability to pull and find that first inside play side linebacker, and the quarterback's ability to read it. Those three guys make this play happen. I'm going to show you how right here. First thing is tackle has leverage, hits him and stays on him, does not turn him loose. Second is the guard is pulling, taking the right angle off the edge of the tackle. And the next, a quarterback is reading the play side inside linebacker. If I were to back this up, you would see that there are uh, three down linemen for Ole Miss. And there are four linebackers. It's a 3-4 defense. So this is technically like a defensive end outside linebacker. This is the first play side inside linebacker. And he's reading. If he comes here, he's going to give this football to Colin Hill, and he will run off this block. But if the linebacker steps outside or stays upfield, he's going to pull this, and now the quarterback will run off that block, and that's what happens. He kind of stayed with the read long enough to see him step outside. Now the puller's got leverage and going to hit him. You run right off that block, and there's your three players. Tackle, guard, and have created the lane for the quarterback who made the correct read, and that's how you score. A little excitement and flex at the end of it. I don't blame you. Again, you can squarely see where his eyes are. He's looking at number one. The play side inside. Saw him step this way, just a couple of steps this way, and now my blocker can get there. This was a big play on the potentially the game tying drive at the end of the fourth quarter, the um, roughing the passer. Brian Cole blitzing off the edge. They don't pick him up. He affects the pass and goes incomplete. We'll talk about the rest of this, but on the play, look at what State does. They have three players with their hands down. One, two, and three. Okay, so everybody else is standing up. And this being a nickel on this particular play, first and little ways to go, a first and 10, they are actually in a 3-3-5 three, three, deal because they know this quarterback's in here to throw the football. So they have three down linemen, three true linebackers, and a nickelback playing as a, as a linebacker. So there's seven in here. On the, st the uh, snap, two drop. There were seven, so now there are five rushing against six-man protection. The bust here is the running back. The running back checks. He's got four linemen versus three rushers to this side, and he checks inside behind the center because they're twisting with the middle linebacker. He checks the middle linebacker and not the backside, effectively the linebacker. So they wind up with uh, five blockers on three defenders and one blocker accounting for two. And that's how uh, Cole gets free. Now, the question is, it roughing the passer? These officials talk for a long time. You could almost read body language that it looked to me like, you know, the guy who threw the flag is really confident. The umpire, Hubert Owens, is not trying to talk him out of it, but just making sure he's really sure he wants to call this. You could read that body language, and then he sticks with it. He's like, okay, man, you want to call it? And then it's a matter of, you know, you decide, is that roughing the passer? And he's looking right at it, you know, and it really is a question of does he hit him in the head intentionally? He obviously thought he did. Let's see. You know, at that point, he's absolutely trying to bat the ball down. Does he intentionally go after his head? 
Yeah, I don't know. I know they call that every time in the NFL. Here's just a very athletic play by Willie Gay down here on the goal line. They read him effectively, but make it just try to affect him with play action. Really, he's pulling the ball the whole way, and the tight end's going to get free behind him. He's open for a touchdown. And it's just, you know, athletic enough to get off the ground, actually get a hand on the pass and bat it away. Because if he doesn't, it's an easy touchdown on that particular play. Just, you know, State gave him fits, didn't give up that easy score, ran the clock down. And just great awareness, just great athleticism from Willie Gay. Great athleticism right here shown on the goal line by Willie Gay, the outside linebacker. I I think it's no read. I think it's just play action where they're trying to affect the linebackers and get the tight end open. He's coming off the edge, tight end wide open. So it's either hit the QB or get a hand on the ball, and he's able to get up there and knock it down. Again, just coming off the edge, out in space, and great athleticism. And here's the touchdown that had a chance to tie the game, send it to overtime. One-on-one route in the slot versus the uh, defender who guessed. Cole guessed that it was a slant, and we'll go back and look at that. And it's not a bad guess at all, given where you're lined up and what you're doing. You know, State is just going strictly man-to-man all the way across the board against empty five receivers with nobody in here. And obviously against a, a slot receiver, you see he's lined up on his inside shoulder anyway. He's thinking he's going to go here. And he gave him that move to begin with. So he's trying to react to that inside move. It's just an excellent route to get him going that way. And as soon as he does, to spin back out and get open and the quarterback puts a ball on him for a score. Defended pretty well and reacted to pretty well by the corner on the outside. He just didn't, you know, have they couldn't close that gap. And then this, of course, a penalty. Hikes his leg, emulating DK Metcalf. And this time it really hurts their team. I noticed that, you know, you saw a quarterback who wasn't celebrating when he saw the flag. I think he knew what was up and was like, his head's in the game. He knows that this is about to hurt. And it's cute at the time. And I just thought it's kind of ironic that you have a a ball boy who thinks it's cute laughing. And I think he was jawing with the people in the gridiron club. It's ironic that then he's probably the guy who has to retrieve the football on the missed extra point. It was backed up because of that penalty that kept it a 21-20 game and Mississippi State wins. All right, so hope you enjoyed that. Appreciate Renaissance Bank for sponsoring these videos. And uh, you can make it worth my time, too. Just hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And if you haven't liked my Facebook page, I'd appreciate you doing that. Uh, Facebook.com slash Radio Wyatt. And I'll see you over there next time. See you.